Hello and welcome to the Rear Fender Bubble video tutorial. In this video, you can learn my workflow and how I like to create high quality surfaces. Alright, here is the final product. This is how the highlight looks like. Surface to scan distance deviation is under 1 mm. I welcome you to see the whole tutorial with detailed commentary, explanation and annotations throughout the video. Alright, so first of all we are going to create these fender surfaces to connect the wheel arch with the side surface. Once the fender is complete, we can move to the bottom area of the bumper. If you want to see how the wheel arches were created, please go back to my first video titled Wheel Arches. The link is in description. That video shows the process of building the wheel arches geometry. It was just a matter of creating accurate curves with minimum CVs for accurate manipulation and making sure they are neat and stay close to the scan. I am borrowing the curve from the arch. I use extend and offset tools to create the anchor trimmed edge for the, uh, for the base of fender surfaces. I'm creating this curve for projection so that later we are going to trim off the side patch. This way we are going to have the edge ready to create the blend between side surface and the wheel arch. These two curves are not concentric. Actually, this is the second time I'm modeling this fender and I kind of know by try and error that this curve should be further away to the left. I'm using a project curve tool. Make sure that the view option is ticked on. I select a curve, press a space button to accept, select a surface, press a space button again and here we have projected our curve onto our side surface. In the next step we can trim off the residue of unwanted surface. After that we can move the curve we used for projection away in Y direction so it doesn't obstruct our view and make a template. Okay, so let's turn the scan data on. Let's create a blend just to see where we are at. Um, we are just trying to do some modeling experiments and see how the blend is going to look like. Just remember that the top edge is G2 and the bottom edge is G0. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, select another adjacent edge to create a second surface and elongate our blend. Just remember to pick the adjacent edge and remember that if the surfaces that the edges are created on have no continuity issues, then alias will be able to pick the edges. If there is, a, let's say, a tension break between surfaces, you won't be able to pick the trimmed edges. At the moment, the highlight looks nothing like the scan, but don't worry, I will show you how to manipulate CVs to achieve a result that is very close to what we are after. I can show you a trick that I have picked up from the Autodesk official website. Basically, let's just uh, create uh, something very quickly. And this is going to be our supporting patch and it's going to be created by the draft uh, tool. We can evoke the history and modify the reference surface. It's good to have the surface we can align our blend to, but you just need to remember that 99% of work is about relying on manual tweaking and this method uh, we are using now is just the beginning. This is not going to do much for us in terms of a finished product. Later we would be manually tweaking the blend like crazy and the reference surface will lose its initial function. Let's turn on the lattice and see how the surface changes when we pull and push its CVs. And just remember again that this method is good for initial workflow ideas, initial strategy and not a long-term goal. 
Later, when we get into manual tweaking, we will forget this auxiliary surface. We have created the surfaces, but there is a long way to go. At the moment, I'm visually evaluating the result and at the same time, I think of what my next uh, step should be. I'm sure you also can see problems with the highlights, volume and topology. The blend looks nothing like our scan. We would have to do some manipulation. Also, these two surfaces have spans. We can just template them for the time being so that they don't obstruct our view. As you can see, the patches are not true to the scan at all. Let's turn on the zebra stripes. We can manually remove the span and make it clean and neat 5 degrees surface so that it's easier to work on. Do you see how the bubble moves down as soon as I touch the CVs? If you overdo, you can move the bubble up again a little bit. At the moment I am manipulating this patch just to better represent the scan and I suddenly think of something to explain. I want to slide this hole down. I'm not sure if you know that there is a huge difference between picking this arrow and that arrow. If you choose this arrow, you are going to slide along this axis. But if you choose that arrow, you are going to slide along that axis. Why would that matter? Well, we want to push the surface in without losing G2 surface continuity. Therefore, it makes perfect sense to slide CVs along this axis. If we use the other one, we will simply lose our curvature G2 continuity. Ok, so let's slide along this axis and keep our G2 at bay. Actually, the patch is looking pretty good right now. We have quite a consistent zebra. A little, maybe a little bit more of pushing and sliding will do the job. At this moment, you might wonder how I know whether to slide CVs or move them normal to surface or in direction X, Y and Z. How do I know how to manipulate them? Well, the simple answer is that this knowledge comes with experience. I pretty much know what results particular modifications will bring. Having said that though, of course many times I just rely on my gut feeling and a try and fail method. I have a problem in this area though. Basically this surface is hovering in the air. I think I would have to push it out, yeah maybe a little bit too much. Maybe now I can push it back in a little bit as well. There is an elevation difference between this door panel and the real quarter panel. Zebra here is almost okay. What I can do to further improve is untrimming, uh, untrimming this side patch and deleting this curve on surface, then align this edge to this patch again. I have a position failure G0, but I don't worry about this at the moment. I can always add more degrees later on. For now, I'm happy with the result. If I did add more degrees now, it would be a nightmare to manipulate this patch to suit the scan because it, I would have too many CVs to worry about. What I am really concerned with is the gap in here. I am sliding these two CVs down. Can you see the gap difference here? It is getting smaller. We have the history active so everything remains connected and alive as we manipulate the CVs. What I'm really concerned about is the gap in here. I'm sliding these two CVs down. Do you see the gap difference here? It is getting smaller. We have the history active so everything remains connected and alive as we manipulate the CVs. The patch updates automatically as we modify it. Ok, I think this is getting very close to what we want. There is some deviation that we can measure with the deviation map tool. There is a fuel cap that will always show misalignment. This fuel cap was probably abused throughout its life. Don't rely on tools alone. What you should be doing is this. 
basically you can change colors of surfaces and visually compare them to the scan data. Do you see these overlapping surfaces? If you see too much of yellow color or too much of silver highlight, it means that these areas your surface doesn't stay close enough to the scan. It's an opportunity for you to take your model a bit further and make it better. If you just stick to a making better principle by applying my modeling ideas, you will eventually end up with a good piece of work. Just don't get discouraged by initial failures. Just keep going until you are happy with your model. This way your skills will also improve to much higher level. I squeeze the view to see any highlights in perfection even better. I'm first of all looking at the zebra stripe in here. I want to make it nice and round. I have noticed uh, some discrepancies in this area. Can you see the difference of zebras between the scan and our model? I want to show you what I did to remove these zebra differences. Basically I grab this CV which belongs to this surface on the right side and I slide it down. I let the edge of this patch slide along the surface of this patch. Basically just quickly tweak here and there to get a better effect. Remember that the scan data will never be 100% accurate, especially when you work on a scanned clay model which is created by people who might have shaky hands. This rule doesn't apply to the Japanese clay modelers, of course. Their hands are perfect. I'm thinking whether to add another hole to this patch, but then I abandoned this idea. In the meantime, I have decided to work on this patch as well, because I don't want to have this single patch without knowing how it connects to the next one, to the adjacent one. Here I found out that my CV layout could be better, so I go on and slide CVs around. I'm going to look at all the CVs from other views and move them about if needed. What I'm going to do is to take these two CVs and move them in Y direction. Remember to think twice before you call the job complete. It always takes time to come up with something that is close to being perfect. We are getting very close. What I am looking at is zebra and at the same time the gap between these two lines which are scan line and our surface line. You can use a whole planarize with history active. This way you won't destroy the continuity here. This surface needs some modification. You can see that our zebra doesn't do exactly what it needs to do. We could try to push this side surface in, so that this stripe dives in slightly quicker. It will have more lead into it. By doing this, we can achieve a better transition and improve directional change. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to just leave it like this. If you watched the body side uh, surface tutorial, you would know that there was elevation difference between front and back door. It caused a lot of trouble. Therefore, our surface here is not 100% accurate. If I remember right, we had something like 1.7 mm of deviation between the scan data and our geometry. Let's just quickly align this edge to the side surface, keeping the position influence zero. Otherwise, we will get a exaggerated CV's movement, because Elias is trying to compute the alignment to eliminate the gap. You see how CV's are moving about as we slide this button from zero to one? Our objective is to keep everything very clean and uniform. Project a line with the view option on. I like to use the view option because I find the normal option uh, unreliable in some situations. It might sometimes make CVs get a little bit wobbly. Of course, every situation is different and sometimes you get a good result with any of the options, sometimes you don't. Just try whatever works better for you. 
I wanted to show you this as well. Something is happening right here. If you slide CVs, you will be able to keep the G2 continuity, but you can but you also can notice a black dot appearing in the green highlight. This is to show that something suspicious is happening with our G2 continuity. The black dot is to indicate the beginning of continuity failure. The failure is still very small, so it won't affect our model as such. Also, it won't cause the continuity to fail at this moment. Its value is something less than 0.001 depending on your tolerance presets. If you go to Window, Deviation Table, you will see your deviations. If you just click on this, you will see an arrow to indicate where this deviation is. 0.0001 is not detected as a gap. How to remove the gaps? If this is already a 7 degrees patch, you could simply add a span to the surface, or if deviation is not too big, you can keep the 7 degrees and try to manually slide CVs to right or left to see if this can bring you good results. But for the purpose of our exercise, a green checkup mark is good enough and we are happy with this. There is a position G1 failure between these two patches. But you can just grab this CV, select move, press and hold control button plus left mouse button and click somewhere near the CV of the other surface you want the first CV to snap onto. And again, you can hold control and play with the arrows on your keyboard. It's either left or right or bottom up, depending on the surface orientation. By doing this, you will be able to jump from one CV to another. When you have selected the CV you want, just repeat, select, move, hold, control, plus left mouse button, and snap to the CV of the other surface and remove any unwanted gaps. As you can see, we have some tangent G1 problems. To eliminate it, we could slide CVs, for example, we could slide this CV because this row of CV, CVs is responsible for tangency G1. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, this row is G0 position, this is G1 tangency and this is G2 curvature. I think we can use this tool, the projected CV, to achieve G1. You basically grab this CV and you can slide along this axis, the, the hole. This section of a hole can be your axis. If I click on it and hold left mouse button, I can slide along. Let's try uh, using the align tool in here and see um, what it will do to our CVs. Sometimes using the align tool gets all the CVs messed up. Right, in this case, CVs didn't get messed up, but we lost a G0 position around uh, wheel arch area. Let's go ahead and realign this edge with 6 degrees. I basically didn't have enough CVs to maintain position continuity. Let's just quickly examine the comb curvature around the top edge. Yeah, I think it's not bad. Let's just move it a touch to go that tiny step forward. Now, now because we, we have moved this upper CV, we created a gap between the blend and the side surface. We need to realign this edge, ideally with a view option turned on. Okay, we are all done and happy. Just the last thing to mention, you might wonder why I always delete history. It's because sometimes active history might mess up your model. You often do some movement, do some tweaking and suddenly CVs might go crazy and very often you can't go back. The undo option doesn't work.